Imagine coming in on your target, delivering your payload, catching them off guard, flak all around you, explosions, shaking, not sure whether you're going to make it out of the bombing run alive. Fighters have been past you in all directions and getting out of there, finally, thinking to yourself, mission accomplished. On December 8th, 1941, 34 Mitsubishi G3M2 Type 96 bombers, or NELS as the West called them, flew from the Marshall Islands and came in on Wake Island at 13,000 feet. And what the U.S. does is, with any foreign aircraft that is built, the foreign country that created it or produced it will have their own name, and the West likes to give them nicknames. Like, And they even do it to their own aircraft, such as the F-14 Tomcat, MiG-29 Fulcrum, and others. This would mark the start of the Battle of Wake Island, which lasted until the 23rd. Thing is, Wake Island and Hawaii, they're separate, separated by the international date line. One thing, about the, one thing about Wake Island that impressed the American naval planners was that it was an ideal spot for an advanced defense outpost. And because of, of this strategic positioning of the island, a couple of contractors began construction of military facilities on Atoll, which Wake Island was one out of the three islands that made up the Atoll Islands, though the contractors were not able to complete the facilities before the start of World War II. The force on the island at that time was made up of a garrison of Marines, several dozen Navy personnel, and a handful of Army radio operators. And during the, on the first day of attack, and this attack happened day after Pearl Harbor. And so, Air Force-wise, they only had 12 F-4 Wildcats on the ground and a handful of anti-aircraft weaponry on the ground, too. The Japanese, they were able to create a surprise attack because of lack of radar facilities, meaning little communication, as well as radar being a new technology that was being developed during World War II, but an important one. Now, coming to the Mitsubishi G3M2, it was created out of the need of a fast, long-range, torpedo-carrying bomber to hit distant targets with minimum attack time so it can get in, hit its targets, and return to base as quickly as possible. And these were all the requirements from the Japanese Navy. And this is of what any of the Air Forces or Navy during World War II wanted a bomber. So they wanted a bomber that can get in there, drop its payload, get back quickly without being shot down by anti-aircraft weaponry or any air, enemy fighters. And they didn't want to lose any crew or plane bombers if possible. This aircraft, it had powerful offensive capabilities, which included bombs and torpedoes, as well as range and speed being traded for protection of the aircraft and pilots. And this was common with J the Japanese aircraft that were built during World War II, because the Japanese wanted aircraft that were light, fast, maneuverable. And due to these requirements, they did not have any defensive armor or anything like that. Whereas the Allied aircraft, they had armor and everything, as well as the characteristics of whatever their Allied aircraft were. And this was famously seen also on a couple other Japanese aircraft, such as the famous Japanese Zero. So the thing about Japanese Zero was that it was fast, maneuverable, light, though it had no armor or protection whatsoever. So all Allied pilots had to do was hit the fuel tank, which was located under the cockpit, and so as long as the Allied pilots of the Allied fighter pilots were able to get good shots there, you could easily knock the Japanese zero out of the sky. Though still it was a very formidable foe. And the original design of the bomber had no defensive weaponry because the Japanese thought that the high altitude capability of the of the G 3M2 was sufficient enough to outrun or evade enemy air, 
anti-aircraft guns or aircraft because of its high altitude and high speed. And at the same time, they're also planning of a fighter escort too to provide any assistance if needed by fending off the enemy fighters. Because during World War II, whether it be the Japanese allied side, the German side, whenever they would do bombing raids, like one allied aircraft, right? So take the European front example too. So when the B-17s were flying into Nazi-occupied Europe to drop bombs on wherever on wherever the bombs need to be dropped at, the Allied would also the Allies would also have fighter escorts such as like P-51 Mustang, the P-47 Thunderbolt, to make sure that those aircraft could fend off enemy fighters while the bombers focus on their mission of dropping their bombs on the targets that they need to. And the Japanese, they also thought even when flying at low speed, such as doing like a torpedo run against enemy vessels, the bomber's speed would be enough to make sure it does not get hit by ship-based anti-aircraft guns, as well as aircraft launch from enemy carriers. Because even the ships during this period, or just warships in general, they have anti-aircraft guns just in case to fend off any fighters or bombers that are doing an attack run against it. And the original structure of the G3M2, it was lightweight because there were no defensive weapons at all. And Jap- and the Japanese thought that as long as you have enough crew to operate the aircraft when it had maximum payload, that the aircraft's characteristics themselves should help the aircraft evade enemy enemy fire and no need of defense measures like machine guns because if you look at the bombers during world war ii on the allied side german bombers and bombers like that they had defensive measures like machine guns like for example b-17 it had machine gun turrets on the top the tail the bottom to make sure that it can fend itself even if there are no escort fighters when it was doing its missions And and after a while, a modification was made that incorporated three machine guns, and the aircraft was still able to keep its lightweight structure because there were no defensive armor or self sealing fuel tanks as the Japanese thought it was unnecessary and would decrease the bomber's speed and altitude abilities. This characteristic, they carried it on into the next versions of this bomber, like the G4M, which was built around the purpose of built with I mean built with long range fuel tanks for heavy payload de- delivery with yet again left no protection allowing the chance of being shot down by like anti aircraft fire as well as enemy fighters to be high and just depending on the mission outcome. And when it comes to the came to the bomb site in this aircraft the G3M2 in its version, it was not that technologically advanced as Americans, as Americans had a lot of research going and they had the latest avionics on the aircraft, but the Japanese didn't have the latest avionics or the latest tech, so they had to do, or they had to create with what they had. And so because of this, Rather, the Japanese thought rather than having one bomber do a precision air strike or a precision uh, torpedo run against an enemy vessel, if you send a formation of bombers, you you have their the chances of hitting the targets, whatever they may be, such as like an enemy vessel or base. There were there was a higher chance that the formation of bombers could land more direct hits, causing more damage rather than one single bomber doing a precision strike on a on a specific target. And later onwards in the war, they improved the G3 into the improved G3M3 Model 23, which came equipped with more powerful engines and increased fuel capacity. And this was only used in service for two years, 
and later it was used along its older version for the long range rain time constants because of its range in good radar abilities and after being in this area for some time go on to be used in different areas such as transportation so coming back to the ending of battle of wake island the island it spent the rest of the time in the hands of the japanese though it was a costly battle as to meaning when the japanese were trying to take it they suffered more losses to take the island than the american side because they did try a couple of waves but the americans fought back and retaliated but eventually it fell into japanese hands and at the end of it by the time it was in japanese hands i said the casualties were high on their side and they suffered a lot to get the island and what happened for the rest of the war is that the allied forces they were just cut off supplies and periodically do raids on the island and that was the outcome of Battle of Wake Island, and more specifically, that was is some of the history of the Nels Bomber. And the West loves to create nicknames for foreign aircraft or foreign fighter jets from foreign nations as well as their own. So, yeah, thank you so much for listening. Have a good day. Stay tuned, like, and subscribe, and see you next time.